So good morning and a warm welcome in our next episode of our Lettings Launchpad series of PCS Pods. So I'm Kate Forsdyke and I'm a director of PCS Legal and today I'm joined by Matt Baldock of Charles David Cassidy Estate Agents and today we are going to talk about letting your property. So morning Matt, thank you for coming in today. Good morning Kate, thanks for having me. So if I was going to rent my property out, so say for like the first time, um, what would I need to do to get my property ready to, to rent out? So there's a couple of kind of things. So you've got the, the, the legalities, I suppose. So um, if you've got gas at the property, you need a gas safety certificate. Yeah. Um, they're valid for 12 months. You need um, an electoral installation condition report, which is an EICR. Okay. Um, they're valid for five, five years. Um, and then you need an energy performance certificate, an EPC, much like if you're selling the property. Right. They're valid for 10 years. To let your property, that currently has to have an E minimum as rating. Um, the government are trying to push for all properties to have a minimum of a C rating. But, oh, and, wow. So that's something just to bear in mind. Yeah. But at the moment, it just needs um, to have an, a, an E rating. And then the other thing is obviously just the, the general decor. Um, the way we were saying, if you give somebody a house in good condition, you'll get it back in good condition. Yeah, of course. If, yeah. if you try cutting corners, then they're going to cut corners looking after it. So, you know, good standard of decor, not cracks in, in doors or tiles and things like that, yeah. shower working, um, mould free, you know, the, the grounding the, around the bath, that kind of stuff. Yeah. Give, give them in nice condition and, and you should get it back in good condition. Yeah, of course. No, that makes sense. So as well as paying a monthly rent, would the tenant be responsible for any maintenance or service charges? So say if you've got a flat or even some freeholds now have management companies attached to them, or would that be more responsibility? So, so that will still be your responsibility. So when yeah. you're, when you're, especially if you're letting out leasehold, or probably like you say, if you're going to start doing your calculations, obviously work out the letting agency fees, but yeah. make sure you include your ground rent and your service charge because you're still going to have to pay that. Right, okay. Um, and... Are utilities included in the rent as well, or, or would the tenant be responsible for those themselves? So, as a general rule of thumb, the, the tenant's responsible for them. Okay. And you can't dictate to the tenant who they use those utilities. So, the tenant's right. free to so go to each other, electric provider, gas provider, etc. Yeah. The tenant pays the council tax, tenant pays the water, um, TV bills, etc. Some landlords do a bills included model. Right. Um, and if you're renting out a sort of room, so in a, in a house of multiple occupations so or an HMO, they, their bills included. Just right, obviously yeah, you can't it's easy to work bills out. that way. But generally, if, if it's a, a normal let, then the, you pay the service charge on the ground rent if it's a flat, but the tenant pays all utilities. Right, okay, brilliant. So, um, who'd be responsible for the maintenance of the property? So, any sort of garden care or general maintenance works? So on the whole, it's it's the tenant's responsibility. Mm. Um, much like if you if you were leasing a car, you know it's your responsibility to put petrol in it. If you, yeah, of if you knock the wing mirror off it, you've got to have the wing mirror you know, replace that that kind of thing. Um, gardening, it's the tenant's responsibility again. They've got to look after like the shrubs, things like that. Yeah, you need to check the clauses of your tenancy agreement because there might be different things in there. Uh, again, a general rule is if um, so, say like a plant or a tree, if it's above the tenant's head height. And they don't have to do that. Oh, then right. the landlord might have to get somebody in to do that. But mowing the lawn and, and things like that, you don't have to do. Um, if a fence comes down, well, that's the one we have every winter. If a fence comes down in the wind, yes. that's the landlord's responsibility to, right, to, get, okay. to get that part. Yeah. Um, you know, obviously, if things break, so if um, uh, washing machines tax, if, if they actually break, landlord's responsibility. Yeah. But if it's, it's kind of, yeah, but if it's kind of carelessness, we often have some kind of oh, door handles come off, and we say, well, how did that come off? Or you know, like eight-year-old child yeah. standing door, well, then that's your responsibility yeah. to deal with. So. so a lot of it's kind of common, common sense, really, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. So who's responsible for insuring the building itself? So the actual building is, is down to the landlord because right. obviously you own the property. The tenant, yeah. tenant obviously should get the contents done. Yeah. But, yeah, the building's the landlord. Okay, so what would a letting agent do if I instructed one? So, Or would it be more cost-effective for, for me to find a tenant myself? It really, the cost effective is, is an interesting one because it depends how much you value your, your time. So yeah, it's like sure. everything in life. You can do absolutely most things yourself, but do you have the expertise? Yeah. And also, if you do things wrong um, with, with letting a property, there are some really hefty fines okay. to deal with. So on the whole, you know, what a, a good letting agent could do, and much like in the in your advancing world, there were different yeah. standards, but what a good letting agent could do. So the first part of the job is actually finding the tenant. 
So that's prepared some really good marketing. Mm. Um, because it, you know, you want to, if you've got, again, if you want to get quality tenants, you should have quality marketing, showing the property, vetting the tenants. Um, if you should have a general selection of tenants, liaising with the landlord, make sure we pick the right tenant for the landlord. Yeah. Um, and also, the, the, you know, the type of landlord's going to work with the tenant. Um, doing all the referencing, credit checks, you know, um, previous landlord checks, and employment checks, and then and then moving the tenant into the property. And actually, that's really important because if you don't move the tenant into the property with the right bits of paperwork, yeah, you're going to struggle to serve them in Section 21 to get them to leave. Right. You know, so okay. that's a really important part. And then after that is is the ongoing management and. A lot of people think of management as old oh, dealing with you know, the, the leaky taps and that kind of thing, but actually it's about keeping you legally compliant. It's about making your gas yeah. in, in place, um, serving notices if you do want to ask them to leave. And letting legislation is constantly changing. Yeah. We're going to have another big change next year with the renters' rights bill. Um, so it's you know, yeah, more than an agent just, you know, you might say, well, I know Dave the plumber. Well, that's fine. Give, give the letting agent Dave the plumber's number. Yeah. But they're going to okay. keep you, they're going to stop you getting fined. Or worst case, down a jail. Yeah, so so it's it's pretty much worth every penny, really. Then, because unless you you know the the law itself, it, you're going to get into difficulties. I, I, I think there's a big cost versus value thing in most things in life, and yeah. a good letting agent should be value yeah. and actually an investment. Because again, you know, we will you know they should be inspecting the property every three months, making sure the fact you know it's being kept in good condition. Yeah. So a good letting agent can save you a lot of money. Yeah, definitely. So am I still allowed to have a set of keys to the property myself and gain access if I need to? So you can have a set of keys, of course you can. Yeah. Um, you can't just turn up. And put, so again, while it's your house, it's their home. And that's yeah. the thing you have to remember. So um, a part of the tenancy agreement will be that you've got to afford them quiet enjoyment, I think is the word. Yeah. Um, you can serve 24 hours notice to, to okay. go around. And if they reply yes or they don't reply, you can go with me. But a tenant can refuse that notice. So you can't just say, well, I've served 24 hours and I'm coming in. You have to actually work with the tenant. Right, okay. So what's the general policy on having pets at rental properties? So this is like the most contentious yeah. one, one out there. This is one we have, we have a lot of people arguing about. So at the moment, the, the, it's landlord's discretion. Okay. So it's down to the landlord to say yes or no to pets. Again, the type of pet, because a lot of people have a standard no pets clause in, in the contract. Yeah. And then, you know, a goldfish. Although a goldfish, if a tank breaks, water goes everywhere, can be a problem. But you've got yeah. to look at, you know, gerbil versus three Great Dane dogs. Of course. <laughs> um, the only thing is, again, it's not quite here yet, but with the Renters' Right Bill coming next year, um, it looks 90% likely that the wording will be that the landlord can't unreasonably refuse a pet. Right. Um, but they, they will be able to ask the, the tenant to get extra pet insurance. So at the minute, a lot of people are saying, oh, the landlord can't refuse me a pet. Well, they can at the moment, but if it if this renter's right bill comes in, that will change. That will change. So watch out for, for what happens next year then. So what happens if the um, what happens with the deposit that the tenant pays at the onset of the letting? So okay. Yeah, so, um, and again, just to make kind of listeners aware, really, um, you can only take a five week deposit, right? Okay, okay. and so you can, and, and this has got happen for years. But I know there's some people still out there trying to catch people out. Okay, uh, you can't charge a tenant any fees, any admin fees. Yeah, and you can only take a five week deposit maximum. Okay, that then needs to be registered within thirty days, so it can go into what we call um, a custodial scheme. So my agency, we do that with with um, the um, TDS. We we basically give it to them. They hold the money. We don't hold the money. Yeah. So that, or you can have it in an insured scheme. So as long as you've got the right bank account and you've got yeah. the right money protection, you can have you can insure it. Um, but it has to be registered within thirty days. Um, if it isn't, so even if you read you do register it, nice but forty in forty days, yeah, the tenant can actually claim their full deposit back plus up to three times the amount of deposit as, oh, wow. a, as a penalty. So it's really, really important yeah, you get that deposit you do that straight, straight away. Straight away. Okay, so what happens if there's an issue at the property um, when it's being let? So do the letting agents deal with the ongoing management of it or is it down to me after a tenant's been found? So again, it depends on the service that you kind of select. So um, most agents, again, as, as a rule of thumb, have two services, what we call a let only. So they literally do all the advertising, referencing, find the tenant, put the tenant in and it's down to you look after. Yeah. Or they have the full management service. So we have a full management service where... We take a percentage of the rent every month, 
will really look after everything that's going on. And, and those issues, again, they can be maintenance, but they can be legalities. So yeah. um, if the tenant doesn't pay the rent, chasing the rent arrears, we do that. Um, if we want to ask the tenant to leave serving the, the right notices. Yeah. Um, because, again, you have the, the notices you can serve are very date-specific. So, yeah, if you if you choose the management option, you yeah. realistically, for a landlord, what you should do, I think, is basically not have any contact from, you know, my my clients, what they like to do is every three months, they just get um, a photograph a photographic report knowing that they're probably in good condition. Right. And obviously okay. every month they get their rent. Yeah. And, and really they don't want anything else to do. No, that's right. You know, right. They just yeah. want a hands-off investment. Yeah. And again, so management affords them that. Yeah, so it's, it's definitely easy to do it that way, isn't it? I think so. So have you got any other advice or tips for people looking to rent their properties for the first time? My main tip for someone looking to rent for the, for the first time um, is try and be a bit friendly with, with the letting agent. I know I'm saying this from the agent's <laughs> the agent point of view. The problem is it, it, it's a very emotional time, right? Because yeah. what we have to realise is people aren't buying products, they're looking for a home. Yeah, of course. And we understand that. But we can sometimes have 10, 15, 20 people wanting to view one property. And we can only yeah. let it to one person. Yeah, of course. And it's actually, don't forget, the agent's only ever the middleman. It's never really our decision. Yeah. Um, and so what we'll, so invariably we'll say we're doing viewings at this time because also sometimes so they're so letting a house, that's already got a tenant living in it. So we say to them, when can we come and show people? And then yeah. one slot. Yeah. So a lot of tenants get angry. So well, I can't make that time. That's fair. The top tip is you've got to put yourself out. Yeah, of course. Ultimately, if you want it, it, you've got to take half a day off work. You've got to take a lunch break at a different time. Yeah. And I know that might be unpopular with kind of some tenants, but unfortunately, that that's the market is in. And there's no point getting an order with a letting agent because they're just trying to do their job. They're just trying to find something. You know, it's it's not their house. Yeah. They're just working for somebody else. So, yeah, if, you know, in in the letting market that we're in at the minute where it's very competitive, just be a bit flexible to, to get that viewing. No, that makes sense. Well, thank you so much for, for joining today. That's really helpful advice and there were some things in there that I didn't even know. So um, that's, that's definitely going to help our listeners and people looking to, to rent a property for the first time. So thank you very much. My pleasure. Thanks for having me.